Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome to another webinar with the Academy of Cheese and Ecole de Fromage. Um, we are here. Um, I'm in Norfolk, and we have three amazing gentlemen in Belgium joining us tonight. Well, we're just letting people join the webinar. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what's happening at the Academy of Cheese. For those of you that haven't noticed, there's level three modules now available. Very exciting. And the next one to be launched by the end of this month, by the skin of our teeth, is um, tasting module. This has been written by our expert, Charlie Turnbull. It was originally three standards and learning outcomes. It's now nine. So very, very good value for money. Um, I think it will be a really useful for tool for those of you that are studying the cheese library module as well and the 200 cheeses. So do check it out. Keep an eye on the website for that. We've also launched um, an exciting trip today um, on the 18th of April. We're going um, over to Paris on the Eurostar and we're going to meet Noemi, who's here with us tonight in Paris. And then we're going to travel to a farm and a uh, maker of camembert to see how it's all made. And then we're going to for a tasting at legendary Fromagerie and Appeneurs in Paris. Again, this is on the website in the events section. OK, so I'm going to hand over to Naomi Richard, who is our amazing um, expert from Ecole de Fromage. She is now, what's your, your new title? Head of Cheese Education. Love it. <laughs> Who knew there was that job? <laughs> Amazing. I am very lucky. Yeah, you are very, very lucky. And Noemi is going to tell us about who's joining us tonight and a little bit about Ecole de Fromage as well. So enjoy. Please add questions to either the Q&A section or in the chat. And please do tell me in the chat where in the world you are joining us from tonight, because we're just being nosy and we would love to know. Anyway, thank you and enjoy. I'm going to disappear, um, but monitor the questions. So thank you. Over to you, Noemi. Thank you, Tracy. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, just to uh, uh, give a little uh, uh, reminder, Explanation: L'école du fromage of Savetia is the uh, the school of cheese that uh, actually uh, uh, doing education around uh, any aspects for uh, about cheese from uh, uh, sensory tasting to cheese making and uh, understanding of the history of the cheese world. And uh, this is a, a structure dedicated to professionals. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, obviously tonight. Uh, L'Ecole du Fromage has uh, uh, gathered uh, some of, uh, of the contents and knowledge to uh, bring uh, what we call the gastronomy journey throughout Belgium. Um, the idea is to explore this, uh, this country that is uh, not coming at the first place to mind when uh, we're thinking about cheese, but it, is, uh, it does have a very long uh, history uh, and tradition of cheese making. Uh, Belgium uh, uh, is known for the um, uh, very old cheeses from the Middle Ages, uh, from the ancient mo monasteries, uh, and to, to nowadays, to the mon modern days where artisanal cheesemakers are pushing the quality, bringing more flavors and more uh, texture options. So uh, we really wanted to give it a highlight tonight. Um, and. Uh, to do so, we have uh, uh, the pleasure and the, uh, the honor to, uh, to, to, um, to invite uh, great cheese experts, but also a beer expert, uh, because when we think about uh, cheese in Belgium, it's impossible not to invite uh, the beer to it. So uh, tonight we have Hans de Prater. Uh, he is the cheesemaker at Passendal Dairy. Uh, he joined the, uh, the dairy in 1984 on the 1st of May, so wasn't uh, uh, bothered by uh, this being a bank holiday. He really wanted to learn about cheese, start his career, and uh, he's been uh, all his career working throughout different departments in Passendown. 
uh, technical production and R and D. He is now uh, director of, of R and D, uh, and he is very uh, known in Belgium as well for uh, having developed a very unique recipe that is the postel. He will uh, talk to us about about it, and he is also a great uh, beer lover and a brewer. So uh, that's um, uh, good uh, tools to add to add uh, on our journey. Um, Jean-Marc Cabet is the uh, second uh, cheese expert. He's a native of Health uh, and a part of Health Cheese family. Uh, so uh, he's managing di director of Terre de Fromage uh, and chairman of the, the actual uh, non-profit organization Fromage de Health, that is the, uh, the organization that brings together uh, the PDO producer. He will uh, explain us a bit more about it and about this uh, fromage de herbe that is uh, uh, the, the only PDO in Belgium. And finally, Jean-Philippe uh, Humblet. Jean-Philippe is head of sales at Bertinchamp Brewery, uh, but uh, he is mainly, as he, uh, as he liked to say, uh, the son of the brewer. Uh, so... Uh, as the son of the brewer, he has to have many skills and uh, and uh, uh, um, very uh, uh, wide experience uh, in the in the um, in the beer activity. Uh, so he will also take us throughout history and um, and information about about beer. So I'll let you uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy and uh, be guided by. Uh, our three uh, great experts, and I'm going to hand over now to, to Hans, uh, that is uh, starting with uh, the famous Passendal cheese. Okay, thank you, uh, Noemi, for this introduction, and hello, everyone. Good evening. I will um, tell you something, first of all, about Passendal cheese, and, um, and then I will switch over to some other cheese we produce in Passendale. Uh, Passendale uh, is situated in the west of Flanders, uh, as you see on the, on the, on the chart. Uh, the climate is mild and humid, uh, so it's ideal for milk production. The milk we use is exclusive Belgium milk. It's collected uh, at uh, about 46 farmers in maximum 70 kilometers around, around the creamery. The milk is all pasture milk or medium milk. Uh, this means that the cows uh, have access to the to the meadows and can be grazing at least 120 days a year and for eight minimum eight hours a day. Mm. The origin of the creamery of Passendale goes back to uh, 1917 mm, uh, when the 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 the, the Donk family, which were farmers at Passendale, they had to flee. Uh, they had to flee away from the, the 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 first world war, the horror of the first world war, and they went. They went. They went to France to Normandy, and there they they learned how to make typical French cheese as Pont l'Evêque. And when the war was over, they came back to their farm and they started making first. They making first their own cheese, their own milk. Into cheese, and then they started collecting also milk from um, neighboring farmers. So in 1932, that's uh, more than 90 years ago, they founded the Saint Joseph Dairy. They established the, the, the dairy next to the original farm. Um, and then they started making cheese uh, like Passendale. Uh, Passendale, the, 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 the original recipes from then and the natural methods of yesterday's are still respected today. Uh, and uh, so uh, Passendale cheese is still made following a unique recipe. Mm -hmm. The curd, uh, curd which is, is produced at Passendale is filled into cheese clothes, as you see on the photo in the middle. Uh, the, the cheese stays in, this, in those cheese clothes for almost one day, uh, and they uh, can uh, the whey is, is, is dripping out uh, softly. Uh, and because uh, and during the, the filling process between each piece of curd, there's a small uh, amount of air trapped into the cheese, uh, so the texture is very aerated. Mm -hmm. uh, this gives this, this typical open texture. With small irregular goals in the into the, che the cheese. So after filling the cheese, the whey continues dripping, as I told, uh, out of the cloth during next day. 
uh, and turn the, until until the firm the cheese is firm enough, and uh, then it goes to the brine, and after brining the cheese is going to the ripening cellars in Passendal, in which there is a surface ripening with yeasts and white molds. Uh, ripening times vary from four weeks for the Passendal Classic up to four months for the Passendal Caractère. Mm. The um, ripening takes place under very humid conditions, uh, which enables the yeast and the molds to develop. And after one week, you see on the cheese rind uh, a, a, a white, a white and bloomy crust. Uh, uh, so the cheese, the rind of the cheese is um, edible. There's no plastification or no um, conservation. It's 100% natural uh, ripening process. And I will tell something about the organoleptic properties of the cheese. The, 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 as I told, the Passendal cheese is characterized by a very typical aerated texture. The texture is rather soft and smooth. Uh, this is the case for all the references. Also for the for the um, for the Passendal character, who has ripened for four, four months, it's still very soft and very very smooth. The taste of the Passendal cheese is very mild. Uh, but it has a unique signature uh, with a mixture of fruity and buttery notes. Uh, the older Passendal, the, the, so the, the Passendal character, has a much more intense flavor. It's going much more flavor, much more flavor. It's more, more fruity. And also some Parmesan notes are into the cheese. Salt content in the cheese is very low. In both variants, it's about 1.5% percent, which is very low uh, for that type of cheese. The cheese is produced by microbial rennet, so it is uh, suitable for vegetarians. That's important. And uh, also something like I can tell that since all the lactose of the cheese has transformed into acid, lactic acid during acidification and ripening, the cheese are, can be claimed, all cheese produced in Passendal can be claimed as naturally free from lactose. So I suppose to hand over to Jean, Jean Philippe, who will do yeah, some. We just, we just have a we just have a, a question uh, about the shaping. Is the passendal shape formed in the clothes um, in the in the in, in the, the public? Cheese, the, 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 the the typical bread form is is, is because as 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 the form of the of the of the clothes because it is not pressed. It's not pressed in a cheese vat. It's just um, uh, put in a cheese clothes, and this gives the typical uh, bread form of the Passendal cheese. Yes. Okay. And Jean Philippe has a pairing suggestion um, from uh, from Bertin Chan. Jean Philippe. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome in Belgium. The Belgium is the beer paradise. Um, just a few words about uh, the beer in Belgium. Um, Belgium is known worldwide for the for the wide diversity of beer that we reproduce. Um, so we produce a lot of beer in Belgium. You get some figures from uh, 21. Um, and Belgium is the biggest exporter of beer in the world. So we are not the biggest producer, but we export uh, a lot of, uh, of our beers. It means that, unfortunately, Belgian people are drinking less and less beers <laughs> of liters of beer per inhabitant each year. But the good thing for us, uh, a craft and family brewery, is that uh, Belgian guys are looking for a, a, a quality and not quantity. That's a, that's a good point. So you see that now we have we have around four four hundred breweries in Belgium. Uh, there were more than three thousand uh, in the beginning of the 90s. Went up to 60 um, in the 90s, and now 400 breweries. It's uh, it's a huge. Um, and so as you see. And almost 70 percent of the production is exported, uh, mainly to to France, uh, United States, um, so Netherlands. So we we export a lot. That's a good thing, uh, and we try, we try to spread the Belgian beers all around the world. Uh, you see the on this on this slide, you see that now uh, there are more and more beers in cans uh, in Belgium as well. Um, so canning is coming, even if in for for real. Uh, Belgian beer lovers, uh, the bottle or the keg is always a uh, best way of best better packaging uh, for the for the beers. 
and there you can also see the that the consumption um, is going down in uh, in Belgium. Uh, unfortunately, for the big uh, for the big industrial breweries, and a good thing for us, a small one. So Bertinchon, just a few words about uh, our brewery. It's a family brewery created 10 years ago. We have four kids uh, running the brewery with my parents and we produce um, high fermentation beer. So here, the pairing with the Passendale, we have chosen to, to go with uh, um, Bertinchon Blanche, uh, which, is a, which is a white beer. It's, uh, it's very refreshing. So for this beer, we use uh, spring water because the, the brewery is, uh, is out spring. Um, then we use uh, local malted barley. So there is only malt, there is no rice, no corn. It's a pure malt. Um, to make the wheat, uh, the, the blanche, we also add wheat to make a, a mix of uh, malted barley and wheat. And it gives uh, a cloudy, I don't know if you see it on the, on the camera. We do. It's, we do. Uh, it's a bit cloudy beer. Uh, it's very refreshing. It's light body, um, and it fits. Uh, without it, it fits very good with the passendale because the the beer will not um, pass over the taste of the cheese. The cheese is light. It's a light taste. It's creamy. It's fruity, uh, so it fits uh, very good with the with the blanche. Um, so it's. Uh, I don't know if someone <laughs> also tastes the beer with me, but uh, cheers to cheers to everybody, uh, <laughs> and then we we can go to the to the next cheese with uh, with Hans, I think. Or feel I free think, to ask questions if you have questions. I think there are many uh, jealous people and uh, and some lucky ones as well. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry guys. Huh? In the you UK, have to come to Belgium. Many, many people look forward to uh, to get uh, Bertinchon available mm -hmm. one day and uh, and uh, repeat the experience. Um, yeah. So now, Hans, we're going to uh, we're staying in the West Flanders, but uh, uh, for a cheese that's got its inspiration from the Chimay region, which is actually also a very key for beer. Yes, I will talk. You uh, will talk about uh, Abbeys. Uh, Belgium is a land of beer, and beer is also much linked to typical Abbeys, and also cheese is uh, linked with Abbeys. So I will um, be, be when and cheese production it, it started in Abbeys in the Middle Ages. So before that period, cheese was uh, very often produced by individual farms, and uh, generally the, the the quality was very poor. Uh, because they didn't, they didn't have any time, any any resources to to spend to optimize this quality, and it was only in the Middle Ages that uh, cheese was more and more produced by abbeys in Belgium, also in surrounding countries, uh, France, Germany, and so on. And um, it was only during Middle Ages that cheese uh, was more and more produced by abbeys because they have uh, they they had the time and they had also the resources to optimize the production process and to improve quality. So there are a lot of cheese produced in Belgium, which are Abbey cheese. And one of the examples is the, the, the Lo, the Echte Lo cheese. And Lo is a small village in the west of Flanders, uh, about 20 kilometers from the North Sea. Uh, and in Lo, in the village of Lo, there was an, an abbey in, from the eight, 11th to the 18th century. Uh, it was the, an Augustinian abbey. And in the current uh, village, there are, there are, there are also some, bu some buildings remaining from that period. And the Echte Lo cheese has been produced for many years in the creamery in the village of Lo. And it was inspired by a recipe which was, which was written by, by the fathers of the abbey uh, in, the, in the former abbey of Lo. It was only in the 80s that uh, the cheese production of the Echte Lo was transformed to Passendale, uh, to the creamery of Passendale. So the Echte Lo cheese is the typical uh, Abbey cheese. It's a semi-hard pressed cheese uh, with a very, very smooth texture. And the ripening is um, in, takes place in very humid ripening cellars. And um, on the rind, there is a smear development, a red smear bacteria with yeasts and um, bacteria, Corine bacteria and Brevibacterium uh, linens which gives the typical flavor and aroma of the cheese. Uh, at the end of the ripening, you see the, the, 
the the cheese has a brown a brown coating uh, we can coat the cheese with a, with a coating in order to protect the cheese from um, during the, the during distribution so the texture of the of the of the of the echte low cheese is very soft and creamy the taste is complex and aromatic it's uh, rather nutty uh, light, slightly salted with some slight bitterness uh, which which goes very well with the traditional abbey beer so I will hand over again to Jean Philippe, who has chosen one of his beers to accord to pair to be paired with the Actalogies. We just have we just have before that um, another question regarding visiting Abbey uh, to see the cheese making in in the actual Abbey. Is it still happening today? And is there no no the Abbey and as I as I told the Abbey of Lou does not exist anymore. It was uh, you see only in the in the village you have. You have some, some some buildings. You have the church, the the church, and some other buildings around the church, which are still remaining from that abbey. But the the, the abbey does not exist anymore, and there is no certainly no no more cheese production. But I will talk uh, later on about postal, which is another another story. It's different. Okay, so there, there is other abbeys yeah, that yes, uh, yes. Oh. there is still cheese production. Okay, we have another question in the. Q&A section as well um, from James. Hi, James. Number two, does Lou have a meaning in Flemish? No, it's the name of the village. I know so Lou has, a, has another meaning in English, but uh, it's not the same. <laughs> it's, the name of the, it's the name of the village. The village okay. is named Lou. Okay, perfect. Nice question, James. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so I'm back again. Uh, so, as Hans uh, already told you, um, in Belgium, a lot of uh, monks uh, produced beer in the Abbey. Actually, we have uh, a trappist which is uh, which which is protecting all the the real uh, beers produced by the monks in the Abbey. So now we have uh, five um, five trappist beer in Belgium. We have Chimay, Orval, Rochefort, Westmal and uh, with later. But you also have Trappist beer all around the world. So I saw some guys from the US, uh, you have Spencer. I, uh, in the Netherlands, you have La Trappe. Um, in, uh, in Italy, you also have um, uh, Trefontaine. So you have a lot of, uh, in, in England, you have Tint Meadow, I think as well. So you have a lot of Trappist beer uh, all over the world. Um, so. It, in fact, the, the, the Trappist or the monks, uh, they brew beer because they, in the beer process, uh, you have a boiling, um, boiling phase. It means that uh, if there are disease or infection in the water, uh, the, the boiling will kill all the, all this infection. Though, so the beer will be good to drink. That's why the, from the middle age, the, the monks brew the beer uh, in their abbeys. Um, and so now, um, we have chosen Iver. So in Belgium, uh, there is a tradition to brew a special beer for the winter season. So this is Iver, which means uh, winter in French. Um, this beer is made with uh, mostly water, uh, so spring water, uh, malted barley. We use different types of barley. It, it will give a, a number color to the beer. I don't know if you will see my glass. Um, no, you see the color? Um, and also during the boiling of the beer, we will add uh, six different spices. So this beer will be uh, warm and, uh, and a pleasant touch of caramel and biscuit, which is given by the uh, caramel and biscuit malt that we used. Um, the Belgian yeast also is uh, give a special beer, a special taste, sorry, um, to the beer uh, and the hops. Uh, in this one, we have two hops, uh, one from Czech Republic and one from uh, Germany. And what we do also with this beer is we make a dry hopping. It means uh, at the end of the process, we just add hops. Um, and so it gives a, a mix of spices and hoppy beer. The process to produce uh, this ale is three weeks. Um, it begins with the, with the brewing. It takes uh, six hours to brew uh, one batch of 20 hectoliters. So it's a uh, 2000 liter per batch. Then uh, the fermentation takes uh, around 10 days at uh, 23 degrees. 
So uh, it's an ale, so it's only high fermented beer. And then we cool down the beer to zero to stop the fermentation. And we stay 10 days again at uh, around zero degree. Uh, this is the maturation of the beer. And then we will put the beer in, in the bottle and the cakes. Um, and then we will spread the bottles and cakes uh, all around the world. Unfortunately, um, with the Brexit, it, is, uh, it was a bit complicated for, the, for a brewery to export uh, to the UK, but I hope that we will find soon uh, an export to have the beer back uh, for you. The, um, the cheese is quite salty. Uh, it's, it has more flavor. Uh, it's more strong cheese. So that's why we have, we have chosen a round and a mellow beer to so the, the body of the beer is, is more strong than the white beer. Um, it's a beer to, to enjoy uh, next to your fireplace uh, during the winter because in Belgium, the winter is very cold. So you, you need a uh, strong beer to, to warm you up and to have a good cheese uh, with it. Uh, I don't know if someone will drink the beer with me, but I will drink it for you uh, again. I, I make small glasses as you see, so it's okay. I will not get drunk before the end of the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay. Good, but, but maybe it will uh, uh, allow you to reveal some secrets. Uh, we had actually a, a question that I don't know if it's if it's secret, but um, is it possible to know what are the spices that you do <laughs> add to, uh, to the beer? Uh, this is a, in, indeed, it is a secret. So if you come to visit the brewery, um, at the end of the visit, you can taste the beer. And you will, if you if you write down the the six spices, if or if you guess the six spices, you will get uh, Bertin Champ Hiver for free uh, all your life. And uh, we always we always uh, say that when the visitors come. And uh, one day I have uh, one guy who he try he write one two three four five he get five correct, and then he, he tastes again tastes again and he. he Hopefully for us, he never found the, the sixth one, but he was, a, he was a, um, a chocolate maker. So he has such a good uh, palate. Wow. So it was, uh, yeah, it was the best guy. He found five, uh, but you can, you can guess some. I, I can you that we, I can tell you that we, we put uh, orange peel, for example. Uh, so we get one and to discover the other one, you have to come to the brewery or taste it and send us an email uh, with the spices that you have found. I think that's a direct invite for us all to go. <laughs> <laughs> when can you take? When 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 are we coming? <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it fits very well with the with the low because the low is very salty. It has some crystal uh, crystal salt, and so we needed a strong beer to 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 pair correctly with it. So fantastic! Once yeah. all the, once all our delegates, Jean Philippe have done their tasting module, their level three tasting module. They'll be experts. They will know your spices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually the, the exam. The exam is going to be to find the six spices. Exactly. exactly. Ah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> they will have words. Brilliant. Thank you. It looks amazing. Thank you. OK, and we're back to, uh, to cheese. We're going to the north of Belgium, to Kempen. Is that correct? Hans? To the Kempen, it's the, the, the region is called the Kempen. So it's the north north of Flanders nor, and the north of Antwerp near the Dutch borders. That, re, that uh, is called the Kempen. And in the Kempen is, uh, 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 the, the, is uh, situated the Abbey of Postel. Uh, the Abbey of Postel is a, it's a Norbertine Abbey. Um, so the Norbertines are called Prémontré in French, or white cannons, uh, you see it on the picture, white cannons because of the color of their, of their habit. Uh, is, um, it's, a, it's an order, Orbitines is an order of monks which was, which was founded in Primontry in France in, in 1140, near to Laon. And uh, Norbertines have a long tradition in cheese making. Uh, so one of the most famous cheese they make is um, Tete de Moine. It's produced in a Norbertine uh, abbey or in, in Switzerland, Belele, the abbey of Belele is, is producing, was the first to produce the Tete de Moine. So um, uh, also in the abbey of Postel, uh, there is actually still cheese making. Uh, you have uh, brother Danny, 
uh, who is uh, starting every day four o'clock in the morning. I was there uh, with him, uh, starting every every morning four o'clock to make to make his cheese uh, at the abbey. Uh, so they 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 make cheese, but they make also other products at the abbey. They make bread, they make herbs, they do uh, they cultivate herbs, they make gingerbread, they make beer. Uh, so um, from next year, from next year on, all products which were produced by the Abbey or in collaboration with the Abbey will have the, 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 the possibility to have a label as authentic Norbertine product. So two years ago, I was I had the opportunity to meet to meet uh, Brother Danny, and we started talking about the new cheese, and so we developed. Uh, together, a new cheese, uh, including all know-how we have in Passendale and also the know-how we have in Postal. And so we developed a new Postal cheese uh, two years ago, uh, which is 100% clean label. So with def without additives, without uh, um, uh, coloring, without conservatives, with an edible rind. So and every year it's produced in Passendale, actually. So every year we send the cheese to the Abbey of, uh, of, of Postal and the cheese, the quality of the cheese is solemnly validated by the brothers of, uh, of the Abbey. Um, so we have, we, we produce one, res one recipe in Passendale with different ripening types. So we launched uh, four varieties, uh, which start only with, with, one, with one recipe. Um, so we have, uh four different four really different it's really amazing to see uh what is the influence of ripening on 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 texture and aroma because we have developed four really four different types of cheese uh only from starting with one with one recipe so the postillon we will start with the postillon it's it's a it's a very young cheese it's only six weeks of ripening uh the texture is is very smooth the, the taste is, is rather buttery and slightly fruity. The fruity is, 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 is one of the, the typical characteristics of the, of the products. And when we continue the ripening, we, came, we come to the postal mature, which is ripened for three months. It's a cheese which is very, very, uh, very fruity. Uh, the texture is more, is, is still firm, but it's still quite smooth. But the, the taste is very fruity. Some with also with some grilled and, and parmesan notes. And when we, the ripening is going further, we have the postal old, which is ripened for six months. And the texture is becoming harder and, and, and stronger. And, uh, but all, in, in spite of the, the hard texture, it's very melting in the mouth. It's like a fondant chocolate, which is melting in the mouth. And in the, and in the in the cheese, you have the presence of some ripening crystals, hmm? and a lot of people, a lot of consumers think this is salt, uh, but less is true because the crystals are uh, composed by uh, protein breakdown. Uh, so we have the proteins in the milk, which were which were transformed to uh, peptides during ripening, and one of the peptides which is formed into the cheese is tyrosine. And those tyrosine, when when the cheese uh, is, is ripening, uh, the, the dry matter is, is going up. Uh, you, you you they become saturated and they go they come they come down in the cheese as crystals. And that is for us. This is really a sign of quality. Without for the postal uh, mature, we, we we really do want those crystals and uh, crystals in the cheese. And also the taste is becoming more and more complex. We have the fruity, we have the grilled, the parmesan notes. We have also the, some chocolate notes. And when the ripening is going on, we have, uh, for instance, to, to up to up to eight months, we have the postal reserve. We call it the postal reserve. It's a, a cheese with a very, very hard texture. It's only uh, almost like parmesan texture. You, 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 it's quite difficult to cut it. Uh, it's crumbling, uh, but it's very melting, um, and the taste is more and more complex. It's fruity, grilled, uh, with uh, also some chocolate notes. So the cheese uh, was developed, uh, was launched in 2021, and the first year uh, we won, we won um, with the Postal Reserve at the World Cheese Awards. In um, Oviedo, it was in Oviedo, we won the super gold medal. 
and uh, the postal reserve was elected, was uh, chosen and voted and declared as best best new cheese best new cheese in 2021. So and last year, 2022, we participated again. It was in uh, Wales, uh, the, the World Cheese Awards, and then we had. Um, uh, uh, super gold medal for the postal uh, mature variety. So this is for us. This was for us really a confirmation of the excellent and unique quality of the postal cheese. So I should. I um, an another question is about the size uh, of the whole uh, postel. What is the, the size? It's a it's a it's a bread. It's all it's a six kilo. It's six, it's six kilo. Uh, it's a long bread. Uh, for six kilo, but we can sell it. We sell it in different shapes. We sell it in blocks from two hundred grams. We sell it in slices. We sell it in uh, half uh, blocks from three kilogram. We have different uh, possibilities of um, of commerce of uh, distribution. And what is the um, the sh the shape of the cheese? Is it is that created in a mold or not? How is the shape created where you've got those rounded edges? It's a pressed, it's a pressed cheese. It is pressed in a cheese mold. Pressed. Okay. It's pressed in a cheese Cheese. mold. But the ripening is also takes place also with a yeast and uh, and um, uh, white molds on the on the cheese rinds. Congratulations so, uh, on your awards. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. You yeah. must be very proud to have created the cheese. Yeah, it was a uh, yeah. Very proud. Yeah. Well, I have another question from um, James at number two Pound Street, who's one of our local, um, who's one of our, our British cheesemongers. And he's saying about the labels that you used for the cheese. So on the postel, you have the, I can't quite see on the picture, but you've got the, 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 the shield shape and the guy in the middle. He's asking, um, do you use a local artist in Belgium? Would you use a Belgium artist to create those labels? Mm, well, you don't uh, know. Maybe not. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite artistic label, but uh, I don't know who produced it. It's uh, quite, quite simple. It's what we, we work with some colors, some colors not too complex, uh, <laughs> black and, and, and brown, and uh, it's, quite, it's quite easy. But it fits very well with the with the color of the of the rind. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can look. Okay. You can look. I don't know we, who who created the label. I no, will, don't worry. Uh, don't worry. Some of the I mean the beer labels are amazing in Belgium, aren't they? You have to get yeah, yeah, yeah. created with the beer labels as well. So well, it's something we will research and find out. Don't worry. Thank you. Can no. tell something no. if you have a, a beer which goes very well with this postal cheese. <laughs> I suppose you have. Yeah. <laughs> so we have. I don't know if you hear, you hear me. Yeah. Yes. Hello. I don't. So uh, with uh, yes, with the. I don't know if you can move the slide. Uh, Noemi, maybe you can change the slide. No. Noemi. I know if maybe I think Naomi may have frozen. I think ah. she's maybe lost signal. Ah, yeah, we've lost her. So you'll just have to talk yourself. Oh, yeah, I will talk about it. No problem. <laughs> please do talk about it, and um, hopefully we'll get Naomi back. No problem. So for with this cheese, we have chosen a, a Bertinchon blonde, a blonde beer. Uh, as you see, I don't know if you see on the screen, we have a, uh, an untypical uh, size of bottle for a Belgian brewery. We use a bottle of half a liter. So we are the only Belgian beer in 50, C, 50 CL bottle. The idea when, when we created uh, Bertinchon was to, to share the bottle, not to drink it alone. So with one bottle, you can pour two glasses. So try to share it with your friends or family. And the idea is to create memories with the beer. Uh, it's like the Madeleine de Proust. Um, when, you will, when, when you will drink again the Bertinchon, you will remember the good time you get uh, with the beer, maybe a wedding of the friends or uh, drink it in, in holidays or with good cheese as well. So it's, uh, this is Bertinchon. And uh, the big B on the, on the label is uh, the B for Belgium, because uh, as, as you have on the cards in Belgium, it's B. Uh, and it's the first letter for beer, for Bertinchon, for Belgium, and for Benoit, 
which is the um, which is the first name of my dad. So it's a uh, it's a B. Um, so the blonde one, it's a uh, so it's a nail uh, like the others. Um, it's made with water, uh, two malts, um, no spices. So it's a pure pure malt and ups and two ups for this one. Uh, and like the others, it's uh, three three weeks to to produce it. So you see the the foam is uh, is creamy and uh, and white. Uh, color is blonde. It's um, I will say it's an easy drinking beer. It's really refreshing, um, as the it is to 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 fit well with the with the uh, salty taste of the the postel uh, old because it's an old one. It's it has been uh, as Anne said. It is uh, it's not a young cheese, so we we need something fresh to 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 balance um, this to compensate. Yeah, to compensate yeah, yeah. The, the taste of the cheese. That's why we have chosen the Bertin Chamblon. Um, you have to, to pay attention to Belgian beer because they are really easy to drink, but you, mm -hmm. have, you have alcohol in it. So in, in Belgium, uh, for us, uh, 6.2 or 7 ABV, it's quite a normal level. Um, so we used to drink strong, strong ale, uh, but uh, don't drink if you have to drive after. So pay... <laughs> To remain remain safely at home uh, with cheese and beer and uh, have a good uh, good evening. I will test it for you again. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I have to. Uh, the, the bottle is open, so I have to drink it. So uh, <laughs> you're very. Um, I know you're making us very. Uh, you're making us very thirsty and very hungry. Um, uh, yeah, I'm really yeah, sorry. I was about to say what percentage uh, ABV it's is it? Six point two. Six yeah, point six point two. Yeah. Actually, oh. we. We produce beer from zero zero, so we have a non alcohol non alcoholic beer, uh, which is produced with a special yeast. So there is a fermentation, but the yeast uh, does does not produce alcohol, so it's a zero zero. Uh, it goes from zero zero to to eight ABV, uh, which is the the strongest one. Uh, it's a triple. In and in Belgium we have we have a lot of triple beer. Uh, triple is only a name for a oh. strong blonde ale, so it means. Uh, a nailed as from uh, seven or seven point five ABV uh, will be called triple in, in Belgium. Uh -huh. I didn't no, realize that. That's yeah, interesting. No, I have some triple in my fridge here. Yeah. There is no. Good. It's not three fermentation. There is no three fermentation. There is not three ups. So it's only strong blonde ale. So in Belgium uh -huh. we have double. So this blonde uh, is called double triple. And now we also have quadruple. So La Trappe uh, in the Netherlands they produce a quadruple. It's. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah, so I it's think like actually the trend, the trend is more to the low alcohol beer uh, because uh, yeah, people can drink more. I think Noemi is back. Oh, yeah. she is. She's back. I've made her co-host again, so we're ah, back yeah. on the screen. I've got a okay. couple of questions. So um, uh, how do you get the steady froth, so the head on the top, during the making process? I think is well. I'll let you answer. I didn't. Sorry, I, di I didn't hear it. So, how do you get the steady froth, the head, during the making process, or is it more during the sort of pouring process? Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's during during the brewing. So uh, when we when we brew the beer, it means that we we mix uh, warm water uh, with the malted barley, which is. Uh, which is um, going through a mill. So we have a, a floor and we mix it. We begin at 40 degrees uh, for the mashing and we, we make different steps. So from 40, we, we will go up to around 80 degrees. And we know that at some temperatures, we will, we will play on the, on the form, of, uh, on the form uh, structure of the beer um, because we need proteins uh, for, the, for the form. So it's... Uh, in Belgium, the ah, not in Belgium, but every, every, everywhere, the complexity for a beer is to produce uh, at, at each batch the same beer because people they know the taste of the beer. It's not like wine. Wine, wine is different because you have uh, grapes from 22, grapes from 23. Uh, for a beer, we have to, you have to keep the same taste. That's really difficult. That's why we have uh, uh, all of our breweries uh, totally. It's fully automatic, so it's controlled by a computer. Uh, which makes all the different steps and time uh, during the during the mashing. That's why we we get a, a dense and, and creamy form for for this one. 
Fantastic. No. And then we have another question to, for about the postal cheese. Is um is that cheese is it distributed to the USA now, Hans? Not 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 yet. We started in Belgium. We started as a new cheese. We started uh, we launched it in Belgium. We want to first uh, have enough experience in, in our own country in Belgium. And then uh, uh, I think uh, from next year on, we will be able to export it. Okay, thank you. And there's a question in the chat. Have I missed that? Yeah, about the postal beer. Is there ah, one? yeah, why aren't we drinking postal <laughs> beer with postal cheese? Are you because I, I do not produce postal beer. <laughs> <They're> produced, <laughs> yes. It's produced at the Abbey. Um, and my, my, my father is not a monk. <laughs> so it's. Uh... <laughs> it sounds like another trip, actually, Jean Philippe, doesn't it? We have to do a trip to the to the to the postel or to the to the Abbey. Yeah. And we have to come to you as well. So there you yeah. go. Thank well, you. In Belgium, we have more than we have more than one thousand five hundred uh, beer brands. So it's it's crazy. You can you can drink. I think during, during five years, a different day, a different beer each day. And then you will you will have tasted all the Belgian beers. I don't know how many cheese we have in Belgium. I have no idea of it, but we have a lot of beers. <laughs> less cheese, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's less cheese. There is less cheese. Um, I don't. Uh, I didn't try the pairing, but I can tell you that uh, my computer couldn't couldn't stand it. So it might be a strong one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, healed over. Um, okay, so uh, I understand that uh, during my drop up, you had the uh, uh, the explanation for the the Bertin Chamblons. Yeah, I, I just I maybe just gave you an explanation about the the letters of IBU. It's uh, it's the bitterness uh, unit. So um, so if it is zero, there is no bitterness. If it is uh, hundred, it's it's really really bitter. And uh, EBC, it is the the color of the beer. So zero, it's uh, white, and red is black. Like this, you have the, the scale of uh, bitterness and the scale of color. Like this, if you like uh, bitterness, you have to find, uh, if you like IPAs, uh, it will be more than uh, 35 of IBU. Um, here it's, it's 20, so it's, it's slightly bitter, but not, not that much. Mm -hmm. So, um... yeah. I think uh, it's now time for the uh, only PDO in the UK. Uh, for that, uh, we will hand over to Jean-Marc. Jean-Marc, uh, you have a beautiful video that you shared with us. Uh, we're going to obviously have the pleasure to watch it, uh, but uh, I'll let you introduce and uh, take us through this uh, health journey. Yes, good evening, everyone. So my name is Jean-Marc Cabé, and I'm... Uh, uh, I'm working now family dairy now from uh, 30 years. So I uh, have this small uh, city, a small town in Belgium, in the east of Belgium. And that's the name of our uh, famous cheese. Uh, and so I, uh, I was born and I live in, in Erve. So I, I'm really a, a, a guy from, uh, from uh, my region. So now perhaps we can start with uh, what watching the, the, the small videos.
so when uh, when we are talking about uh, ever cheese we are uh, talking about a very old uh, story uh, we find uh, records of the existence of ever cheese uh, from the middle age uh, but it's really emperor uh, charles v which is a very important character in the history of uh, fromage de herve in the 16th century, Charles V forbidden uh, the export of wheat to the Netherlands. So the farmers of our region were no longer able to uh, export their crops, and so they convert to dairy uh, farming. Uh, and they transform their agricultural, agricultural land into uh, pastures. So at this time, transformed milk was uh, in cheese was one of the only way to conserve the milk uh, for a long time. And so ever cheese came uh, more and more famous in our regions. And uh, it was even used as a currency. Uh, we know for sure that uh, in the village, houses were uh, sold against a payment of a rent of ever cheese and butter. <laughs> so that uh, demonstrates the, 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 the existence and the quality uh, of, uh, of uh, our fromage de herve. In the 18th century, um, we traveled outside, our, uh, outside Belgium. Herve was sold in uh, Alsace and in Lorraine where merchants arrive with uh, carts full of cheese and return with wines. Uh, this rem remarkable uh, tradition has continued from generation to generation till today. Uh, in the last century, F cheese was produced um, in white, so it means not uh, ripened, not matured, in the farms. Then the farmers sell the white cheese to ripeners who mature and sell the cheese to the shops. In the 1960s, there were about 500 farmers in the regions uh, who were produced ever cheese. In uh, 1996, Herve Cheese, Fromage de Herve, received uh, the European PDO label, and uh, we are very proud of, of this, uh, because it's the only uh, Belgian uh, PDO cheese. Today, we are uh, four, we are only four producers of Herve Cheese remaining, and Terre de Fromage is the most important one. Um, so um, we can go perhaps to the following. Yes, dear, thank you. We are the only uh, Belgian PDO cheese, as I say. So um, the, the production uh, processes used to make fromage de herve remains as they have uh, been for centuries. And uh, we have to follow the strict uh, specification of the PDO. Um, so it means, for example, that the milk must be produced uh, in the PDO area. So it means the farmers are located in this region. The milk must be transformed, must be uh, transformed into cheese in the same area. And we have, of course, to follow, to comply with the, the specification of our PDO. Um, so, um, for the we have several sorts of ever cheese. We can perhaps go to the following uh, dia. Thank you. Uh, we have the first uh, the the normal one, the the, the version we call herve doux, fromage de herve doux. So uh, you see. Uh, herve usually is in a, a shape of uh, 200 grams at its a cubic a shape of six centimeter. Um, the Herve Du is ripened during uh, about uh, four weeks and we uh, get, as you can perhaps see, an orange 
wind. And uh, this orange wind, in fact, is uh, uh, the bacteria of uh, the specific bacteria of the herb cheese. We wash uh, the cheese with uh, salted water, uh, two or three uh, ties per, uh, per, per week, and the bacteria uh, grows and gives uh, the color to the, to the rind of the cheese. We also have um, what we call fromage de herbe piquant, and in fact, is the same uh, cheese, but ripen uh, longer. It's ripen about eight week, eight weeks, and so the cheese is uh, is more uh, more strong, because uh, herbe cheese is a lactic cheese, and so. Uh, uh, this cheese is wiping, ripening from outside to uh, inside, from the wind, from the rind to the center. And so uh, who older is the cheese and who stronger is yes. We uh, also mature uh, herve cheese, uh, do, herve, do, uh, fromage herve do, with beer, always a pique, which is a, a, an alcohol from our region. And you see perhaps that uh, in this case, uh, the, the rind is, um, the rind, for, for, excuse me, the rind is, uh, is very, um, um, what's the name? So it's uh, it stays in the beer during uh, three hours and afterwards we pack immediately the cheese. So uh, we really have the, 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 the taste uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the beer. Um, the, last, uh, the last version of the uh, Herve cheese is what we call Herve Remoudou. And uh, there is a legend about Remoudou. Uh, in our dialect in Walloon, uh, uh, remood, remood means we milk. And so the legend says that in the past, the farmers um, uh, first only removed, removed a part of the milk during the initial milking. And then the tax authorities came to the farm and collect the tax on the quantity milked. And after that, the farmer carried out a second milking. And this second milking was more, the milk was more fat. And above all, the milk was produced tax-free. And Remoudou was uh, produced with this uh, special uh, milk. Today, of course, there are, uh, there, there are no second milking anymore. Uh, nevertheless, we use milk uh, with more fat and so to produce Remoudou. And so Remoudou is uh, more aromatic and more tasteful. Someone's asking regarding the uh, beer used uh, to wash. Uh, so we we uh, we don't uh, use uh, <laughs> the beer of uh, of uh, Jean Philippe Bertha Echard, but we use uh, the a beer from uh, Abdey in origin from the Abdey of Valdieu, and the father of Jean Philippe in the past has produced this beer. I, I know that for sure. Eh? That, that's right, eh, Jean Philippe. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so we, we, we use this, uh, this local beer. And um, someone is coming back on the, on the process. You said it's a lactic cheese. Um, you, you do still have uh, some rennet in the, in the ingredients, yeah? yeah? Yes, of course, of course, of course, of course. Okay. So perhaps I can, uh, Herve cheese is of course a uh, um, um, uh, soft cheese with uh, um, a washed twin, wash wine. So it's a, a, a very, uh, very strong cheese. Uh, it's a soft cheese. So the texture is uh, creamy and, uh, and soft. And uh, the, the taste is uh, always stronger uh, with, uh, with, the, um, with the, the, the time. 
And the sirop de liege is actually a, a traditional way to uh, to pair it. Yes, yes, uh, that's why right. sirop de liege is in fact is a sort of uh, yam. Uh, so, so produced with pear and apple, and is very uh, characteristic in our region. So, uh, Pays de Herve, our region, is uh, uh, well known for production of milk of pear and apple. And so, we produce milk, cheese, uh, sirop de liege, and also um, uh, cider. So uh, we we are used to uh, to eat herve cheese with sirop de liege. And uh, it's uh, it's amazing because uh, we uh, Ciro de Liège is uh, a, a very um, a lot of uh, sugar in this product, but the the the, the association with uh, uh, herbal cheese, which is very strong, is really uh, really good. And obviously, Jean Philippe has a recommendation to to pair it. <laughs> Yes, I, in fact, my uh, for the small history, my my dad uh, created uh, Abbey du Val Dieu Brewery in '96. So I lived next to next to Elf, so next to Jean Marc, for uh, for 15 years. So I know well the the cheese and the region. It's a beautiful region. If you have if you have the opportunity to to visit uh, Pays de Herve, it's uh, it's a really green and uh, yeah, you have very beautiful landscape. It's it's great, and uh, you can visit the Abbey of Val Dieu. Uh, there are no monks anymore, but you can go and uh, have beer, a value beer. Uh, they are very good as well. <laughs> so uh, with the with the fromage de herve, I have chosen a dark beer. Um, so I've chosen a Bertin Chambrun. It means brown. Um, the idea is, you see, it's that uh, this beer is, is really sweet uh, because for this one we use. Uh, a special malt uh, which is uh, roasted, like for the like for the coffee beans, so it it will it gives the beer uh, a coffee coffee chocolate uh, mocha sweetness. Uh, so um, it 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 pairs uh, it pairs very well with the with the strong cheese, which is uh, fromage de herve. Like Jean Marc said, the um, the sirop de liege give a, give a sweetness um, with the cheese. And uh, this beer is it's, it's sweet as well. So you see the EBC, it's uh, it's 80. So it's, it means it's really dark, uh, but it's it's a light one. It's not it's not so so heavy to drink, um, because in Belgium we have some beers uh, that we say from them that uh, if you drink this beer, it's like eating a, a piece of bread. Uh, but the the Bertinchon, it's really an uh, easy drinking beer, and it it fits very well. Um, you know, in the in the north of France, you have the Maroilles. I think it's it's quite the same. I don't know if it is a, because I'm not a cheese expert, but I think it's a, maybe the same type of the. I don't know if you can correct it's me. A, uh, a similar type of cheese, sim yes. Similar type, and there, um, there, they, they have a lot of mines, uh, and so when the when the diggers uh, for the morning, they have to be strong to go into the mines, so they drink coffee. And they they just um, have the maroilles, which are, which is a strong cheese uh, with the bread, and they, they just uh, put it inside the coffee to to have uh, I mean, to have strength to to go working into the into the mines. And so that's why we have chosen the Bertin Chambrun. Um, it's like a dessert with the cheese. And uh, so sorry again to drink the beer uh, <laughs> alone, but yeah, it's. Uh, I will not. I will not drop it. I, the beer is open, so I have to to finish it. Oh, my kind of beer as well. We've got a couple of questions um, uh, for Jean Marc about the breed of cow. Typical cow breed um, that the in the herd area that the cheese might be made from. Which which milk? Which cow? Is there a typical one? Sorry, can I get you to unmute? So yes, and uh, that's a story of uh, of uh, the main PDO cheese. In fact, uh, in the past, herve cheese, uh, fromage de herve, was produced with uh, only local uh, milk, and milk was not uh, pasteurized, so it was raw milk. And in this milk, you have uh, specific uh, specific uh, bacteria, and uh, this uh, uh, this uh, bacteria. Um, 
uh, give the, the, the specification of the of the fromage verve. And so now uh, we we can produce ever cheese with raw milk or with pasteurized milk, but it's important to use the milk uh, from uh, from uh, from from the region. And is there a particular cow breed? So is it Frisian Holstein Frisian Jersey cows? Definitely not Jersey. I, I sorry, but I, I didn't understand. Is que y a une race particulière de no, 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 no. Okay, so and I my one of my question as well to you was so from to go from sixty producers now to four is so sad. So is that just there is less demand for the cheese or less less milk to produce the cheese? No, there there are there are a lot of of, of milk, uh, but today is, that's a, a good point that we will produce less uh, fromage as in the past because in the past uh, it was the only existing cheese in our region. Eh? Uh, today we have uh, in the shops uh, a, a lot of different cheese. So of course, the consumption and the production of fromage has decreased the, 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 last, uh, the last years. But uh, also the, um, in the past, uh, the, they, they were, there were a lot of, of farmers and they transformed uh, their the, the the milk in cheese in the farms, but today it's uh, it's not anymore uh, possible uh, because for 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 uh, uh, sanitary uh, reason, uh, for example, it's it's uh, difficult to produce this sort of cheese in farms because it's very uh, sensitive uh, cheese. Okay, thank you. Um, we had another question related to the uh, availability of this cheese, so uh, in the UK and uh, in Ireland. Uh, no, we don't sell it to, to UK or to Ireland, or not yet. <laughs> uh, we, we can get um, herb in La Fromagerie in, in London, stock it from time to time. It's possible. We, we don't sell it uh, directly, but we have some who sail in, uh, yes. in Rages, for example, in Paris, and uh, uh, they, they, they export the, the cheese, but we, we are not, uh, we don't know where they, they export and where, where they sell. Okay. Yeah. So La Fromagerie in London has it seasonally if people want to try it. It is excellent. I've had it from them. And the good news is that uh, I know that uh, for our UK listeners, um, there's going to be soon uh, under the Haute Fromagerie brand, um, a cheese selection that gathers some of the cheeses that were introduced uh, tonight. Um, the the Estelou or the Postel uh, with, with different names, they are part of it. And uh, also the Maroual that is, uh, as we mentioned, similar to Herve, although it's, it's not exactly the same cheese. So uh, you'll be able soon, hopefully, to, uh, to repeat this experience um, with, with uh, what will be, will be called the Flemish cheese selection. Um, so uh, that's uh, um, the good upcoming, upcoming news. Um, and, uh, and that's... Uh, um, Thank you <laughs> to uh, to everyone uh, for uh, for joining us and a huge huge thank you to Jean Marc Hans and Jean Philippe that really made it very smooth easy to coordinate and um, you know when when you work with experts that that know their product and are patient uh, it's it's very easy and uh, enjoyable process so. Uh, a big thank you, and uh, and uh, I, I hope everyone enjoyed it. I did on my side. <laughs> I think everybody, I, well, I would like to say on behalf of the Academy of Cheese, thank you to you all, amazing, amazing experts, and that you have just made us all our mouths water, and we're all going to be jumping on the ferry or on the aeroplane and coming across to visit the abbeys. Try the beers. We may have to organise another trip, Naomi. If if the Paris one works, people sign up. Um, we will. Uh, 
<laughs> we will organise a trip, an academy trip over to Belgium. But thank you to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry we've run a little bit over time, but some great questions. And hope to see you all soon at some stage. Thank you all. Good evening. Thank bye bye. You. Good evening, all. Bye bye. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers. <laughs>